Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have this question on the board for you guys. So why don't we just get into question? Now this question actually isn't a real question. This is actually another bonus video from my last video. So in this video, we will be deriving from this Binet theorem, which says that the Fibonacci is equal to this. And we're going to derive from this to prove that the 2m plus 1 Fibonacci term is just equal to this big thing. Now, if you watch some previous videos, you will know what this is because we've been working on it on our past videos. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to see how we can factorize z to the power of m minus 1. Now, there are actually two ways to solve to factorize this. The first way is if m is equal to 1, you can do the classic way, you do z minus 1, blah, 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 blah. But we want to try and factorize this in the complex domain. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this equal to 0. So you can see that z to the n is equal to 1. So you know that they're just going to be m root of unity. So, because of this, we know that z is just equal to, I'm going to write z as omega k, and this is just equal to, if you just do the ei theta form, then it is e to the 2k pi over m times i. Okay, so now, since we know that this is actually a polynomial and z is the variable, then we can factorize this how any other polynomial would be factorized. So this can be factorized like z minus 1, and 1 is actually omega of 0, times z minus omega 1, z minus omega 2, all the way to z minus omega n minus 1. Because since we started at omega 0, we have to end at omega n minus 1. Okay, now we can change this into the pi notation, the capital pi notation, capital pi, when k goes from 0 to n minus 1 of z minus omega k. So right now, we're actually going to do a really weird substitution. We're actually going to let z to be x over y okay so you see that the left hand side will just be you can plug this in x over y to the power of m minus one is equal to the right hand side which is capital pi when k goes from zero to m minus one of x over y minus omega k and now I'm going to multiply both sides by y to the power of m. So we know that if you just unpack this, it will just become x to the m minus y to the m. This is equal to, we can first leave out the y to the m to the outside and then copy everything else. Now, we can actually multiply this inside of here. So you see how this capital pi is multiplying n terms together. And this is y to the power of n. So if we want to multiply this in here, then we just have to multiply y to the power of 1 inside of the bracket. So we will just get this out of here. And then we have to multiply this inside by y. Okay, now I'm actually just going to let x to be phi and y to be c. Okay, now if you don't know the values of these, you can check over here. So now that we know this, I'll rewrite everything up the top. Okay, so this is our new equation. So, 
from this capital pi, I'm going to actually take out the k equals to zero term. So we see that this is just equal to the k equals to zero term. We know that omega of zero is one, so it is just phi minus c. In the multiply, now we start from k equals to one to n minus one, and then the inside is still the same. Okay, now what is phi minus c? Well, you can actually try this on your own. Phi minus c is actually just square root of five. Square root of five. So we know that phi to the m minus c to the m is just this. Now, if we divide this square root of five to the left hand side, then look, the Binet theorem says that. This is just the Fibonacci of m, so we can change all of this into just Fibonacci of m. How cool is that? And now, since we want to prove that f of two m plus one is equal to this, then shouldn't we just try and let m to be two m plus one? So we know that f of two m plus one. Is just equal to capital pi k goes from one to that minus that is just two n and then v minus c omega k. Now we are actually going to split up this capital pi into two different regions. The first one is k goes from one to n. And the second one is k goes from m plus one to two n. Okay. Hmm. Now, if you have watched my previous videos, then you know that we can actually change this capital pi from one to n. But there's actually on the conditions that we just change this omega k into its conjugate. Now, if you watch my previous videos, then you would have heard me say that when k goes from one to n, it is the top half, and when k goes from n plus one to two n, it is the bottom half. Okay. So, and also the ones on the top half are actually the conjugate of the ones on the bottom half. So, if you don't know why this is. To look in more detail, you can just look at my previous videos. But now we can actually change this into one single pi again. So this is equal to capital pi k goes from one to n of v minus c times omega k, and then v minus c times omega k conjugate. And now we are going to expand this, so I'll rub everything out. Okay, so now we are going to expand the inside. So this is just equal to k goes from one to n of okay that times that is just phi squared, and then minus that times that is phi c, and then multiply by omega k conjugate. And then we do minus that times that is also phi c times omega k, and then we add c squared, and we know that omega k times the conjugate of omega k is actually one, because we know that a complex number multiplied by its conjugate is its modulus squared, and we know that the modulus of omega k is just one. And one square is just one. Okay, so we can continue this by. You can actually know that v square plus c square is actually three, and you can try that on your own. So this is equal to pi k goes from one to n of three, and then minus. We can take out a v times c, and then the inside will be omega. K conjugate minus omega k. This is actually plus.
Okay, so we know that phi c is just negative 1. So we can get rid of this, and this just becomes a plus. Now, we know that omega k conjugate plus omega k is just 2 times cosine, right? So you can change it back into the cosine forms. So this is equal to three plus two cosine of the angle, which was two k pi over two m plus one. And now we know that we can use the double angle formula. So this is equal to three plus the double angle formula is two times two cosine squared of we can get rid of that two because now it's halved so k pi over two m plus one and then don't forget the minus one now this is just equal to capital pi k goes from one to n so the first thing I'm going to do is you see that there's a 3, and then we're going to minus 2 times 1, which is 2. And 3 minus 2 is just 1. Then we add 2 times 2 is 4, and then we just copy this. So 4 cosine squared k pi over 2m plus 1. And look, this is just the same as this. So, we have successfully derived from this Binet formula that f of 2m plus 1 is equal to this big thing. So, this is the final answer of this very extraordinary question. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoy my video and you want more content like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.